What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I am Eric and we are right and dirty. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about my 2019 Canyon Strive. I've had this bike a little over a year now. I would say probably about 15 months. And uh, here I'm going to give you my review on it. I'm also going to give you my three favorite things about it and also give you a bike check with everything that I've done, all the modifications I've done. So let's dive right in and check it out. So I bought this bike in October, I believe, of 2019. Um, I was looking for a mountain bike before the pandemic hit, so luckily there was tons of bikes around. I even got this thing for a really good deal. I paid under $3,000 for it. And uh, I'd have to say, like, I think I made one of the best choices I could possibly make for what was in my price range. I looked at a lot of bikes, I looked at the Canyons, I looked over at the Konas, I, I looked at Rocky Mountain, I looked at a lot of different bikes. I was also looking at a 29er, I really wanted to get into a 29er, I had never ridden a 29er before, but I knew that's what I wanted. The frame size is a size medium. Um, for me, after all the bikes I've ridden in the past, it seemed really big, but also I didn't know any better because I hadn't ridden a 29er before this. But I'm pretty sure any bike that you're gonna get when you go from a 26 inch tire to a 29 inch tire, you're gonna feel a huge difference regardless. But either way, it felt like a big bike, but it didn't feel uncomfortable. At that time, I was doing a lot of research on Enduros, Trails, XCs, downhill bikes. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't know that much about all the different standards that were out there for mountain bikes. Um, but what I did know is that eventually I wanted to learn how to jump and I needed a bike that could handle that. So I figured I need to go into the enduro route. You know, I wasn't gonna just be hitting trails. I, like I said, I wanted to hit jumps. Primarily, that was like my main goal. You know, the whole start small, go huge came from that and I wanted to learn how to hit jumps from not knowing how to hit any jumps. So after all the research, I went with the Canyon Strive. Um, it was in my price range and I liked the color. You know, having that mint on top was what I really, really liked. It reminded me of the uh, Yeti Blue. Um, the other bike that I was really looking at was the Kona Process 153. If the Kona Process 153 was available in the color that I wanted, I probably would have bought that bike instead of this. But this was the bike that was available, so this is what I got. As far as travel on this bike, it has 150 millimeters in the rear and 160 in the front. Um, I didn't really know what that meant in the beginning. I just knew that it was more than a trail bike and it was less than a downhill bike. So I figured that was probably where I needed to be, right in the middle of that whole entire situation. And after I was researching, I wanted to know if this bike could handle major jumps. And I stumbled across uh, the single track samplers video of him going to Whistler on this bike. And pretty much at that moment moving forward, that's what sold me on this bike. I saw him taking some of the biggest jumps I've ever seen. And I was like, all right, well, if that bike can do that, that's the bike I want. All right, so now let's get down to the modifications that I did to this bike. The first thing I did was I swapped out the stem and the handlebars. Um, I didn't like how the handlebars didn't have that much of a rise that came stock on it. They were the G5 bars and also the G5 stem. There was nothing wrong with them, I just wasn't a fan of them and I kind of wanted to make this bike my own so I swapped them out for DAT bars and a DAT stem. Um, I used that for you know probably about a good 10 months. There was nothing wrong with it, I liked it, it worked well. Um, eventually I found out about Tag Metals and I swapped my stem and bars to that and I will have to say that I like their products a lot more. Um, they had a better rise on the bars. The stem is the Tag Metals uh, T1 stem and it is a 35 millimeter oversized bars. Uh, it is 35 millimeters in length as well. The handlebars are the Tag Metals bars and they are 800 millimeters. And to be honest, I swapped it out just because I like the way it looked better. When I had originally uh, swapped out the handlebars, I also swapped out the seat and got a DAT seat on there. Um, eventually, I ended up changing that as well to a DMR seat, which was the Oi Oi seat in camo. And honestly, I got that seat just because it looked so cool and there was no real reason for it. But I will say that I like the way that saddle feels compared to the DAT saddle. The stock saddle that came on the bike wasn't a bad one. It was an SDG saddle. It was good. It just, I don't know, it was boring. So I had to like change it up and make it my own and that was the second modification that I did. I also ended up changing the pedals because I wanted pedals that matched the bars, the saddle, the grips, and all that good stuff. So I ended up swapping those out as well. And I ended up getting these cheap pedals that I found on Amazon. They're called I Am Rider. And so far I've had them on the bike since the beginning because the first pedals were terrible that came with the bike and I never wanted to use them. And no joke, these cheap $25 pedals 
that I've been using have been going through everything, no problem, haven't had any issues whatsoever with those things, and I'm super happy with them, and I'll probably buy another uh, set of those pedals as well. So basically for the first six months, I only swapped out the bars, the stem, the saddle, and the pedals. And I just rode the bike like that, and most of that stuff, like I said, was just for cosmetic purposes. My fork is a RockShox Lyric 160 millimeters of travel. It's been a great fork. I have zero complaints about it. Um, the locking out on it works great. I mean, it's just been a good fork. As far as my rear shock, I have a RockShox Super Deluxe Piggyback. It's a great shock, uh, especially for what I do on it. It has a lockout on it. Even when I'm like compressing it really hard, um, it doesn't bottom out, but I also did add a few uh, volume spacers inside of it to help that. It also came with four piston guide brakes uh, made by SRAM in the front and rear. And the front rotor is a 200 in the front, and then we have a 180 in the rear. The stopping power is there, and that whole setup as far as my brakes on this thing, I've had no reason to really want to change them. One of the most crucial things on this bike that's so important that I love on it is also the drivetrain, which is a GX Eagle made by SRAM, 12 speed. I think it's a 10 to 52 tooth. And my new project that's coming up, I'm gonna be putting the exact same drivetrain. I figured why mess with something that works fantastic? Know that it's gonna be reliable no matter what. And here are the three things that I love the most about this bike. Number one, the shapeshifter. It changes the geometry on the bike to where it makes it easier for you to climb. And where it's located is right above the top of the suspension in the rear, where it's a little miniature shock that goes right on top of the regular shock. And then you're able to uh, change the geometry slightly so you can have it stiffer or it'll be more plush. That right there has been like the most helpful thing to stiffen the bike up when I need to climb. Once I started getting a little bit better at climbing, by all means I'm not great at it, but a little bit better, I needed something that had a little bit better engagement, and that's when I decided to swap out my uh, DT Swiss uh, three paw with a ratchet system. There's a link above for that video right there on how I did that, and that made a huge difference on my engagement. I went. Uh, to a 54 tooth and you know it has that really cool sound that you're gonna hear right here and now for the third and final modification that I did to this bike um, that just really changed the game for me was the oval absolute black chainring. Uh, this thing has really helped me climb better. I'm still not great at climbing, but it, I definitely felt a uh, constant power through all my pedal strokes. I have a feeling that on my next build that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be putting the same oval chainring on that bike as well. Um, for me, I, I, I'm sold on it. I think it's a great thing. It doesn't like make you all of a sudden Superman on the bike, but what it does is it helps you get that that great uh, just constant power going the whole time and I feel like that's helpful to get you less tired I mean at the end of the day it's all about practice and getting better and climbing more often and being on your bike to actually you know build the stamina up but I'd say if I have something that's just slightly better to help me a little bit I'm gonna do it and that's what the oval chain ring did for me so that's pretty much it for today if you like what we do hit that like button you want to see what we're up to next hit that subscribe button and always remember start small and go huge thanks for watching